I must break you. Go crazy, go crazy, go crazy, ah, ah. Go crazy, go crazy, go crazy, ah, ah. Emphasis on the weekly shown in here this week. Um, I'm a little sick, so if it's noticeable, I'm very sorry. But luckily, we have three amazing chapters to talk about this week. We got One Piece, 1047, My Hero, 351, and Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> See, it's noticeable. Jujutsu Kaisen, 182. All three chapters were amazing in their own right for their own different reasons, right? But out of respect for chapter 1000 being adapted yesterday, we're starting off with One Piece, 1047. Momo's backstory gets a new memory fragment. He gets a whole Who's Martha moment with himself here. And I gotta say the transition panels from past to present are just great to look at. I like that his his face is split in half here. It's, it's just really, I don't know. It's icing on the cake for what we did get from him. You know, he's like really just trying to show himself, you know, prove himself to his mother. And he kind of remembers that now, luckily, which I think is gonna serve as like the final push for him learning how to control the flame clouds. And just on top of, <laughs> just on top of everything that we got there, we get a nice moment from Kinemon, which we didn't need, but we got it anyway. He's like just coming from the Hour of Legends, and he's just asking for one chance. Just give him one chance to prove himself, to try and avenge his boy Odin, who just did this great thing for him. And you know, I, it's great that Momo kind of recognizes that and is just like, all right, I'm gonna put on a face for my mom. And his mom even cries. Like, it's just, it's a great moment. And just the fact that Oda can splice in more powerful moments in between other powerful moments just goes to show how spoiled we are as a community because, dude, he doesn't need to do this. Like, we are already good. Momo has plenty of, like, you know, drive to get him to the point, And he has all the agency or the urgency now to, like, get it together but you know you just gotta just gotta add to it just gotta just give us some more content i appreciate it and on top of that we get back to the rooftop what the hell is this this scene starts off with kaido asking what the entire fan base was asking all of last week which is did you just grab lightning what the hell is happening during kaido's scolding of luffy here he sort of mentions that or i guess confirms that roger did not have a devil fruit which i missed on the first read but my boy alex kind of reminded me of that or i guess sort of Help me remember that because I just assumed from Odin, Odin's backstory that, you know, he didn't have a devil fruit because we didn't see anything displayed. But no, this is legit someone who knew Roger stating, no, he did not have a devil fruit. So unless that is somewhat debunked and Roger did eat the Gomu Gomu no Mi right before he passed just to like instill his will into it, then, you know, I, I, I doubt we're going to get any like, you know, counter evidence towards it. We can just clearly say from, from now, at least for now. Roger did not have a double fruit, which is really small, but, you know, really important. And at this point, between the scolding and just, like, you know, the annoyance of Luffy not taking the fight seriously, I'm just seeing this as Kaido training Luffy. Like, outwardly, intentionally trying to train Luffy, because he's just like, you are you got potential to be the greatest fight I've ever had, and I'm going to make sure you're, you're just that. And he's kind of, like, telling him about, like, hey, you got to use hockey, these antics aren't going to really... You know phase me and it's true that's that's not what was was beating kaido before the thing that has done the most damage to kaido in this fight has been advanced conquerors and luffy kindly obliges and works up a giant fist which i assume is advanced conquerors because you see the black lightning and on top of the black lightning i'm pretty sure he's grabbed lightning inside of it like this is going to be the biggest not if not the most powerful punch we've ever seen from luffy and he just tells, yo, Kaido, yo, you gotta move this. If you do not want the rest of your castle to be destroyed, you better move it right now. Which I think is a bluff, right? I'm assuming Luffy does not want to kill everyone on the live floor, everyone who's left right now. He doesn't, he's not going to assume that everyone's just, you know, left the island, right? He's going to be able to see it from the rooftop. At least some people escaping, right? So I'm assuming this is either a bluff for Kaido to move the island or him basically spotting momo in the distance and going it's time like you see you see me about to smack this man and put all i've got into this last punch if if it is his last punch sorry um if it is his last punch right and this is kind of him telling momo it's time to to you know do your thing you do your thing you know you do switcheroo and i'll do my thing with the with this big old punch and man 
I, I'm praying for Momo right now. And clearly Momo can see Luffy, right? Like, <laughs> we get another Momo and Yamato, like, reaction, which has become a staple in all of Luffy's new moves, right? It's just, Luffy pulls off something crazy, Momo Yamato for reaction, because they're clearly watching. And then also, this is like the second or third time that a chapter's ended with Luffy winding up for some crazy new attack, and... Kaido just sitting there watching him. This time for sure, right? I don't know if this is gonna be the attack that does Kaido in, but I'm hoping it does. Like, or at least puts him on his last, last, last legs, right? Because he's been he's been on the teetering on the edge for quite some time, for a couple of chapters now, um, which is probably like 30 seconds in real time. But hey, man, I, I think if this hits him, if it connects, which I'm pretty sure it will, then. We're gonna have to get his backstory. Like he, he he's gonna have to go down soon, man. If he pulls out like oh awakening, which I I thought he was an awakening. Like I, I get it. You know Oda does like to announce awakenings, announce like big moves and stuff like that. But I don't think Kaido is is holding back anymore, right? I'm pretty sure he's as serious as possible. I also noticed last night uh, while watching 10:14 and 10:15 that. I don't think I've ever seen, or I guess I realized this, but I don't think I've ever seen fodder characterized. And what we get from the samurai and the beast pirates is characterization, right? Like they're not only, you know, serving as like buffer between the chapters and like as reactions to be funny. It's like they're serving as a vehicle for our reactions. Like every time they see something happen, they react the same way as us. And they're like sort of hopeful now, which I guess the fandom should be at this point, right? Like everything's on the line. We know the stakes. The the fodder aren't seeing, you know, what's happening on like the rooftop, but they understand what's happening. And so they're putting their faith in Luffy the same way that all of us are, because we know he's near his like, you know, he's on his last legs. He's, he's, he's really close to, he should be at the, at the very least. He should be very close to, you know, not being able to move or fight anymore. So I guess you could also say they're connected to the people of the flower capital as well or more so connected to them because one they're people of wano so duh well the sam at least half of them are right the samurai are people of wano and you know the way that they're kind of hoping here is the same way that you see you know the wishes you know being you know tossed up via the lanterns so it's like they're praying to the the sun god that they see while the people of in the flower capital are praying to you know, the sun god that they don't see. It's kind of funny too that we see Otoko's wish, you know, transition to Luffy being burnt to a crisp. And he kind of looks more like Nika in this. Like, don't mind me, you know, no no spin foil necessary. But there's like that one panel of Nika that we got in 1018 where, you know, it kind of looks like he has a sword and a, and a spear or something like that. And Luffy's arm kind of looks like the end of the spear. Yo, he's cooking! So, nothing, nothing too tinfoil, but you know. And that's pretty much the end of the chapter. What was that? Hiori was in this chapter. And she's in trouble. Hmm. When was the last time we saw Denjiro? Oh, April 4th. Of last year? Nah, nah. She'll be okay. She's gonna be okay. Hands are out. Jujutsu Kaisen. 182. My son Hakari is so damn cool. I really got Mugen vibes from him. And that might be biased because I just always thought that he looked like Mugen from the very beginning. But... He's just, he's just got the sleek, like, you know, swagger to him now, which is awesome. There seems to be a lot of puns this chapter, but I don't know. I didn't get half of the references during, like, the translation, so I'm not going to focus on them. However, I will point out the fact that we got this whole hands aren't realistic comment from the jump editor last chapter, and then we get this picture of Hakari looking like a fucking jet set radio character, which I just found amusing. Are those Tims? And speaking of characters, we get this guy. Uh, what's his name again? What's your name again? Charlie, or Charlie, Charles. Charlie. Love his power so much. It's like Katakuri's future sight, but you know, written in a clever way to make it meta. And then as soon as he explains it, Hakuri looks like he's breaking the page anyway. It's just so well done. Charlie's able to avoid this attack, but he gets hit by the next one and says the same thing that Yuji says about Hakuri's like hits hurting. Just for some reason they hurt. So I guess man's got hands. Hakuri starts assaulting Charlie's blind spot like Kitomaro did versus Neji. And Charlie responds with, Okay, so I'll just see what my next blind spot, which is like, I don't know how this is meta without fourth wall breaking at all. I don't know what Gage is doing here, but it's just, I love it so much. Of course, for the remainder of the chapter, Hakuri continues to look and sound badass and even tops it all off by expanding his domain. Yo, he's cooking! 
because, you know, he's got no time for any of this. And because of Charlie's power, the rules of his sure hit domain have already been explained to him. I'm looking forward to seeing how the sure hit domain is going to interact with, you know, the ability to see the hit coming, because if it's sure hit, but you can block it, then, you know, what does that mean? Like, will Charlie be on the defensive here? Will he be trying to write a new move? Not too sure, but I think the name of Hakuri's domain, Idle Death Gamble, is going to give us a bit of a hint as to what to expect. Like, you know, maybe it's like he places his odds on something happening and it's a sure hit, but depending on, you know, the outcome, the hit comes from a different direction or something like that. Or maybe it's it has something to do with, you know, Charlie's decisions here, right? If it's a gamble and it works something like roulette, for example, if he bets on black, but the outcome is red, then he can still see the attack coming, right? He knows he's about to get hit. He knows where to block and you know there can be a sort of counter there or maybe it's internal maybe it's like a thing like you know we get that whole internal hit and then his blood splatters out of his mouth like we usually get with shonen so that could also be the case but if it is a sort of bet right that means that he should be able to see the wrong outcome and choose correctly unless there's like a long time right if he doesn't have you know enough hits in on hakari to guess the outcome because the outcome takes too long then his only way to be able to fight is to get another hit on Hakuri. And the easiest way for that to happen, I guess, is if Hakuri has to deal the damage himself, then, you know, we might see some instances where Charlie is able to counteract and, like, kind of, like, trade hits with him so that he can start to see a little bit longer into Hakuri's future. And then, you know, at the end of the day, be able to guess correctly. And I only see Hakuri directly having to hit you if it comes back to why his punches hurt in the first place where it's sort of like a hunter hunter knuckle ability like he punches you and then he removes your nen but in this case it's like a temp temporary removing of like the defenses in your cursed energy output so like if he's going for your ribs for example then you know you try to guard your ribs but his punch at the same time is removing the cursed energy around your ribs so he's just bare he's hitting you bare right and that's why it hurts you, you don't notice it but because it happens so fast but like that's kind of what's happening. And if that's what continues to happen in his domain expansion, then it would make sense for him to, you know, have to touch you directly. Either way, I'm excited to see what this man's got cooked up. I really thought it was going to be him versus Hajime first. Maybe that happens second. Maybe there's no Hajime fight. Totally fine. As long as we get to see some more from Hakuri, I'm excited to see, you know, the rest of this fight play out. We end the week with My Hero 351, a very, you know, traditional shonen chapter, right? We get ominous foreshadowing in the beginning sad villain backstory, big explosions, and then we end the chapter with a proclamation from the hero and a new attack designed specifically for that villain. It's very like on brand with my hero and just shonen in general. It's I, I really liked it. Like I getting this new stuff from Jujutsu Kaisen and then getting this like, you know, world breaking stuff from One Piece is just like Icing on the cake for the week, for sure. I like how Shoto kind of scolds Dabi here. It's like, yeah, you got the brotherly love, or like he's trying to save his brother, but at the same time, he's like, you know, don't you be hurting civilians. You got to take that out on me. This is a family affair. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of funny. It's like, a, a, it's telling a considerate line between like, you know, not killing civilians and just like trying to care for his brother. And Kohei's doing a good job at, you know, having Shoto walk that line. Shoto also mentions how happy he is that Dabi's been watching him this whole time to get that reveal. Because it's like, it gives him a little bit more of a drive, which we all know he needs. But yeah, Kohei didn't really need to do anything special with this chapter or with this fight because he's already accomplished that with the setup, right? This has been built up for such a long time that we can just make this a traditional battle. Big bro Dabi flexing on Shoto, huge fire blasts. It's what you expect from these two people, right? And then to get confirmation that Shoto is like being able to neutralize Dabi's flames, that's the one problem that I had with Shoto the last time that they fought each other, or I guess, you know, encountered each other, which was like, how, how is, how are flames hurting you right now? Like what, what, what could possibly be happening to you? But you know, no, I, I assume, right? The way that he's neutralizing Dobby's flames is through ice, which if that's the case is awesome. That's like no different than Luffy's rubber, you know, getting more rubbery with his awakening or like any sorcerer in the Jujutsu Kaisen universe, reinforcing their bodies with curse technique. I'd even like, say that, you know, if it is the ice thing, then I can see him getting nicer, like at the end of the series, if there's a time skip and kind of reinforcing his body with a thin layer of ice, like Gara kind of does. So I don't know, I I'm appreciating it. I'm like all, you see all the callbacks are already happening in my head. Like I, I just really like this chapter. 
because I, you know, normally don't like to, I, I don't want to gripe too much. Every every week I feel like I talk about My Hero in like a, a disappointed way, but it's not that. It's not that at all. It's just, it's a different, it's a different feeling, a different happiness that I get from this. And this is like, it, it kind of just does Shonen really efficiently and really well. And it doesn't do anything out of the ordinary, but what it does is just, again, really efficient. And we're getting that, I don't know. We're, I, I feel like I'm, I'm the first time I read Shonen or like the first time I read like Bleach watching this, you know, or reading this, right? Watching this unfold is what I mean. But it, it's just a really nice feeling. And yeah, I, I enjoyed this chapter. I hope we get more like it. You know, I, I hope that this is like, a chapter that just we see nothing but you know double page spread explosions on explosions and just like you know all the intensity and just all the the angst between the two like i i want to see that play out with this fight because i feel like we might get talk no jutsu with the shigaraki and deku fight it's i still think that's going to be awesome too right but like i feel like in terms of just like making it as angsty as possible and just like all about the destruction as possible that's what i'm looking to this fight for so you know looking forward to more of it all all three of these unfortunately i think two are on break next week so it's just gonna be wait is it yeah two are on break this next week so it's just gonna be you know jjk 183 and me uh so yeah I'll, I'll see you then my name is uh shonen and yeah have a great sunday um or monday whenever you do watch this and yeah be safe bye oh hold on bye